being able to send commands with universe is a nice thing, but it's just as nice to be able to receive and evaluate commands. How do we do that? Almost all connectors in universe and some devices can receive commands and by using triggers we bring them to the evaluation. Now I just want to receive a TCP command and look at it. How do I do that? I've already activated a TCP connector and I have an external tool, this little test tool here, to connect to me. That means I put the TCP connector first on host, then it's ready on this port 5000. Connect my little test tool, connect, and just send hello. So, then I see a small white circle glow down here, that means there are some data coming in. The data is also displayed here in the monitor, and if I want to see this on the stage, I've prepared a label here, I go to the trigger section and there I see all the devices that offers triggers for this control. I have two standard devices here, which are universe intern, timer and watchdog. More about this in other tutorials, let's just take a look at the normal devices and let's take the TCP connector and then we see print incoming. If I send now, the data will be displayed here. Okay. Now I would like to say we act only if it corresponds to a certain value, namely the value hello2. If I send my order then... If I send my order then nothing happens unless it corresponds to hello2. I can also say here show me a preset that means when hello2 arrives then write hi and so on and so on. And of course I can transfer this principle to the execution of buttons. In other words, I also put a connector in the trigger list and say execute if hi is written. And then we see and for what we have to type in hi here. And then we see how the button is executed and how to prove the timeline also has started here. At this point, a word about the wildcard system. If I don't enter anything here, then any command can arrive. The trigger will be triggered. That means I can write some nonsense here and yeah, still it comes to a trigger. I can not only use execute, I can modify various parameters of this button here. For example, I can only trigger the command stick for release or press and so on. Especially with the connectors, it is important that you define the protocol correctly. For example, you can specify an expected line ending here. If you say, if you say you expect a carriage return at the end, but it just not come, then you get the message: "I receive data, but they are invalid." What is it good for? You can really build your own protocol here, with start and end bytes and line ending and the encoding you are using and then really only evaluate the pure command. The pure command and not the role pre and suffix parts that you normally have with such a protocol. You can also, if you want to know it exactly, spend the data in a raw view. Then it sees then, um, so for example, then you also get the data in decim decimal and hex. And then you can go very deep into the data. This is the simplest part. We just get commands but we can also evaluate some device complex data. For example, I would like to easily output the time code from the timeline 6. As we can see, the timeline is currently running. So I stop here. I can also modify this accordingly. For example, perform a for example, perform a time code calculation by saying the incoming time code should be subtracted from a given time code. Then the time code runs backwards, and there are different possibilities for buttons as well. For example, by saying, oh, one moment, I stop the timeline. By saying, if the timeline goes below a certain time code, then execute the button. And so on. So I will stop here again. This will work in the case of Watch Out and Pandora's Box, and as I said, for some other devices. Exciting is also the point, if I want to control via hardware controller like uh, Artnet or MIDI controller, and as it happens, I have here a small MIDI controller connected. I'm putting in a MIDI connector, 
SEO already reports all right. I have another control connected and I would like to and I would like now that my fader on the controller is synchronized with a universe fader. Especially for MIDI gives a special edition. So I always see what data comes in there. And I see here, for example, the fader I'm currently using is on MIDI channel 0, data 1 is 2, and data 2 is the variable part. And if I want to do this now, I put the MIDI connector on the trigger side. And say for controller, MIDI channel 0, 2 for data 1, and I want to transfer the value of data 2 to the fader. Okay. Now I'm using the fader, and what can we see? The fader is synchronized with the universe fader. Again, the wildcard principle. If I say expect anything here, it doesn't matter which fader I use, because all faders are allowed and only the value will be interpreted. But what if I do not want a control to respond to incoming values, or for example react only once and never again? I can say turn trigger listen off here. Then I have here also a small lock symbol and I can say um, yeah, for this button I will take this command out of here one moment uh, and I can say expect the go command and then he should execute himself but then lock himself too. So uh, let's go and if I send go here, that's exactly what we wanted. I can now send go as often as I want. This button is disabled for all incoming signals, no matter which triggers I listen here. It would also now be locked for MIDI or any other kind of trigger. That means I need another button which unlocks my first button. And this button can be also pressed manually. Uh, sorry, not trigger off, trigger listen, of course. Or it can be controlled by an external trigger too. Whatever, so there you can already build up first logics. There are also more lessons about building logics in universe, in the tutorials linking and modifier part 1 and modifier part 2. One last point for today, for this tutorial, the trigger recording, especially I am with... Um, one moment, I will stop watch out. Especially if I, for example, yeah, have an external controller and I don't want always to find out which button sends which values but I would like to use them as a trigger. Then I take a universe button now, I will put a watch out command on it, then I, then I turn off watch out for a short time because watch out will also wean the effect here as a data source um, explanation later. Here, as I said, is no trigger right now. If I now right click, trigger recording, then I have such a small pretty red dot here. If I now press any key on my MIDI board, that key will be recorded and automatically entered as a trigger. If I press this key again, the button will be executed. Of course, the feedback is orange because I have disabled watchout. Why did I have to disable watchout? Because watchout also sends commands, so we have to be careful. The first trigger that comes in during trigger recording will be recorded. But if you know that, you can easily map a controller to universe buttons because the triggers will be automatically created. So, that was a roundabout to trigger. What did we see? What are triggers in general? Simple triggers that simple evaluate commands such as TCP or UDP triggers. We looked at the complex triggers like the media servers. Have dealt with the mapping of controllers to universe. How selectively interrupt and reactivate triggers and have looked at what the trigger's recording is. In-deep information of everything can be found in the manual 